It's been a very uh, rushed morning. I've not got an intro. <laughs> you'll, you'll pull something out. I can feel it. Cuisine. <laughs> very. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can't wait to see where this goes. We're leaving this in the edit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, friends. <laughs> no, no, no. Go back to cuisine, please. I was going to go welcome, friends, comma, cuisine. Just okay. let, me do it. let me do it. But then you just shouted the word cuisine. <laughs> cuisine changes country by country. Very few uh, ingredients can be found in all four corners of the globe. There is, however, one foodstuff that is ubiquitous in the food of all countries. The humble, delicious onion. Therefore, this is National Treasures Interviews. The onion of YouTube content. Favourited everywhere. Welcome. Not bad. <laughs> that was not where I saw that going. I thought you were going to say salt. Salt? No, onions. They're in everything, apparently. Uh, okay. it's one, yeah, it's one of the few things that grows like everywhere. Do you like raw onion? No, I'm not Fred West. <laughs> no, but some people have raw onion in salad or burgers and stuff. I'll occasionally have like um, sliced tomato. Fred and sliced... West? What? Was Fred... he an onion fan? <laughs> Fred West used to eat raw onions like apples. Oh, uh, like I have... a Grinch. Uh, yes, but um, real and scarier. <laughs> uh, dead now, of course, but I'm not bothered. Uh, <laughs> sliced red onion in like tomato and like basil, a bit of balsamic vinegar. But I'm not munching down on an, on an onion for my snack. <laughs> no, that's fair. They're gross. Um, how are you doing, Will? You, have you had your beard trim? You have. No, you I haven't. haven't. No, I haven't. haven't. Um, because uh, it. Well, I'm going after this. I'm going to go after this. As soon as we're done, I'm going to get my beard trimmed, and then I'm off I mean, to. But you've just moved to Brighton. How on earth did you select a barber? Because we practically have as many barbers as people. Well, the thing is, I always think because my hair <laughs> isn't really a concern, I just go, yeah, <laughs> polish it. But um, if I think the barber's got a nice beard, he knows a nice beard. So I'll just go the one near my house. All right. Okay. okay. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm all right. I'm... Yeah, I've got nothing to report. All well... I can think about is Minecraft, Will. That's all I want to do. It's all I can think about. I'm bit... I've found an amethyst cave and I'm trying to make a gaudy purple house. Shall we do an interview? Because... We have made ourselves Let's do an super today. boring. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a fantastic guest today. I think it might be the very first community engagement manager I've ever spoken to. So that's a first for today. And I think this is the perfect guest because we have a little community and we're trying to engage you. Ah, let's uh, see. Uh, and we can't can. manage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Will. Um, so can I please introduce from English Heritage, Melanie Hills. Hello. Hi. Hi thanks Melanie. so much for joining us. What did you think of the onion chat, Melanie? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves an onion. Everyone yes. loves an onion. Um, that write that down for merch, Will. Get your <laughs> scented nose out of my crowny business, and everyone loves an onion. Um, everyone loves thank, an onion. Thank Sorry. you so much, Joyce. Sorry, we're a bit giddy this morning. The sun's finally come out after weeks of misery, so we're a bit OTT. Um, where are you telling us about today? Where are we going today? So we are going to Belsey, which is up in Northumberland, a little estate that's kind of in the middle of nowhere in Northumberland. Brilliant. I love it already. Now, I did a preliminary amount of research just to vaguely know what we were talking about. And it, as you start to read about this place, it's incredible because it's it's Belsey Hall and you go as a hall and then you read down and go and a castle and a garden and a form garden and a bookshop like can you give us a sort of slight overview of what we're talking about here because it sounds incredible well you've nailed it in in all of those words basically there there is many different parts to belsey and it takes you on a bit of a journey back in time so we have a medieval castle then we have uh, an unusual quarried garden and then we have formal gardens that are around a kind of georgian period house it's Grecian in style. I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah. I've, so you say you've got a castle, but we're not talking about the castle so much. We're talking about the house. Mm -hmm. And the house was built to like, replace the castle? Well, the story goes, this is my right. version of, of history in like a snippet. That's so... exactly what we do. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the tone. Great. <laughs> 
So my version of the history is there's 700 years of Middleton family history at Belsey. They originally lived in the castle and it was a medieval castle. They wanted a nicer house, so they built an extension. Then a couple of hundred years later, they wanted a nicer house again. So they quarried their own garden using the stone to build a hall. And that's how you have the hall and all the other parts. And the right. Middleton family did this. The Middleton family did this, yeah. Okay. Any relation of Kate? Not that we know of. Any relation of Aunt? <laughs> Not that we know of. <laughs> uh... Let's start with the hall. Okay. Um, I suppose my first question is, the hall is... Um, is displayed furniture free, isn't it? You you sort yes, of walk it around is. it. What? Why have you decided to go down that route? Why isn't it like furnished and you step back in time and the way people lived? So when English Heritage took guardianship of the hall, which was in about 1980, uh, the Middleton family specified that because it had been designed in this grand way, and it was all about the architecture, that actually if you put furniture in it people don't notice the architecture as much. So okay. that's what they said. Please don't put furniture in. Uh, look after it, but don't put furniture in and let people be wowed with the architecture. That's quite cool, actually. I don't think I've been anywhere that's done that before. I, I think it does. Obviously, there's some visitors that, that don't get it, um, but that's fine. Um, I think once you have a look round and once you get your eye on things, you do start to notice things and you can use your imagination basically to start imagining what it was like to live there and what would have been in the rooms, even though we haven't furnished them. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask, is, there was furniture there when they lived there, right? <laughs> I believe so, yes, from the photos. No wonder they gave it to you guys. It's like, <laughs> Just... oh, we love our architectural palace, but God, I want to sit down. <laughs> but my back really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so appreciative of these arches, but oh, my feet hurt. Um, so what kind of architecture are we supposed to be being impressed by? It's Gre Grecian? Grecian is the big word, so Greek-inspired, basically. Right. Why okay. is that? Are the Middletons a bit Greek, or was that just popular at the time? No, so um, so the, the one of the Middletons, Charles, who went out on his honeymoon, he went out on his grand tour, as they call it, and he travelled around Greece. And while he was there, he loved their architecture and all the things that he saw. So as you do when you come home, you decide to build a house that looks like it. Yes, yeah. it's, it's like when you go for like two weeks in Spain and you come home and you're like, <laughs> do you know what? We're going to have tapas for tea. I'm not doing a yeah. big meal anymore. <laughs> I'm going to do tapas. <laughs> But, for example, uh, money. in Minecraft, I went below the ground and found oh an amethyst cave. <laughs> and now I'm making a big purple monstrosity house. Do you play Minecraft, Melanie? Uh, I don't. She's a grown-up. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, we're grown-ups. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I'm a childless comedian. Why shouldn't I play Minecraft for hours? <clears throat> no. I'm accused of playing on, on in many things, but not in Minecraft. Oh. You can join us and play our game. It's great. Oh, um, maybe I should try. <laughs> you should. It's the stop selling Minecraft and talk about houses, um, Lord. So you said that the the hall was was mined or quarried um, off the garden. What kind of stone is it in the garden? Sandstone. Oh. So so as you do, you dig your own garden up to use the stone. It's very sustainable. He was obviously thinking well ahead of his time. <laughs> yeah. No carbon footprint and all that. Yeah. Getting planning permission for that must make it a lot easier. You're like, is it, <laughs> is it sympathetic to the local style? It's just moving the garden into the air a bit. Well, one of the things that he did when he when he quarried the, the, the his own garden is is not only that, he had to move the village. So the village of Belsey was actually situated where the garden is or beside this the garden is, that's just like you know in the emperor's new groove when kuzco wants to move the village <laughs> to make his summer house that's literally happened thing. but if you think people would have been happy though because they were getting a better house or you well, hope they would be getting a better house yeah yeah but you'd complain anyway to get an even better <laughs> house wouldn't you you'd be like oh sentimental value mr mr bell say come on give me give me more mr middleton Give, give me even more money for my plot of pigsty. A plot of pigsty, is it? Uh, <laughs> so you said there were quite a few, like, characters in the family. 
Uh, this so was that Charles Middleton? We just yes, or, yes. He, he's he's one of the key characters. So so just to throw you, uh, Charles Middleton was actually a monk. So Ooh. not a monk, as in as in a friar type person, as in his surname was Monk. Um. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> I think like you did. I think you did that on purpose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Yeah. So, so Charles Monk was the responsible person for designing uh, the hall and having it built and quarrying his own garden. So, okay. And, and this is this is going to be a stupid question. So, is it a quarry now or is it a garden? It's both. So it's it's not quarried. So you don't take the stone out of it now. But as you walk in. You are immersed. You are technically going underground. It's just like Minecraft, Laura. You're going <laughs> underground. Melody, Melody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I can make a quarry garden. In my... Anyway, uh, yes. Um, uh, so, what is the garden? Hang on, I'm struggling with this now. Okay. So, plants are growing out of rocks, or has it been soiled back in a bit? Like, how how do how do you put a garden in a quarry, please? So there's not huge amounts of soil, but there is enough soil for plants to grow. But also, as nature does, it kind of settles itself in rocks anyway. So as you walk through, um, you're you're going underground, and um, in the design of the garden, they also planted kind of trees on top of the quarry walls to make you feel even smaller. Oh, cool. So um, so you do feel very little. Um, and then there's all these array of kind of plants. Um, we're known for rhododendrons and magnolia trees. Um, and collections of both but we also have because of the quarry garden and the fact that it creates this microclimate there's some unusual plants that can grow in the middle of northumberland that usually grow in brazil so gunnera for example if you know what gunnera is i do not i do not either so it's a giant kind of umbrella type plant so i could stand under it and still have this giant leaf over my head it's very That's tropical. Cool. Very Jurassic Park like. That's what it's like. Yes. Nature oh finds goodness. a way. That's amazing. Yes. Okay. All right. Because that was quite a big thing, wasn't it? To, to to travel and bring back plants and and sort of see what you could grow here. That was like. Yep. Was that Victorians? It was a crazy. Or was that earlier? I think it was a bit earlier. Um, right. grand, grand tours, as they're called, or. or are renowned for many key characters across history. Um, and it was Charles's grand tour that, that inspired him. Okay. Um, just to stay on the garden super quickly, uh, mm -hmm. it says as well as the quarry garden, you have formal and naturalistic gardens. So okay. formal, I imagine, is like all nice hedges and like I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm imagining a maze, I'll be honest with you. Okay. Uh, What's a naturalistic garden? Just wake up, I'll forget it, it's fine. <laughs> just just let, that, let, let, that, let that one be. So, so your right formal garden is kind of uh, uh, set out beds in a, a certain design. Uh, we don't actually have a maze, but uh, the same principle applies that it's kind of structured in, in the design and key plants would be planted in a, a very unique and kind of formal way. Uh, so that's our terrace area. But the more naturalistic areas are just... Like it says, it, it's, it is planted as such, but when you're walking through, it feels like you, you're walking through a natural area. So the woodland beside the hall, uh, called Hallwood, uh, is designed to, surprisingly <laughs> enough... Good name, yeah. good name. I like that, yeah. <laughs> ...is designed to have a Mediterranean feel to it. Ooh. So right. That's, that's part so they of planted, like, going. Mediterranean trees and plants... A long time ago, and now it's sort of it's sort of wild, but it's sort of curated. Yes, but it's like weaving paths. So yeah. formal gardens are kind of straight uh, paths uh, with with very much formal beds. You know, set beds where this woven path through the woodland is is um, where the path kind of just weaves through the trees rather than in straight lines. Great. Yeah. Great. I love it. I think, like, because looking at the hall online, looking at images of it, I don't like the flat roof, but I think I would like the inside of it. And then, like, even if you're a bit like, mm, don't want to look at the flat roof, you've got a whole castle there to have a look at. So what's still there of the castle? Is that, like, 
couple of walls, walls and a roof. What have we got left there? And so what kind of roof has it got in the castle? If it's flat, forget <laughs> it. Lois. Not interested. She's not just, interested. You know what I mean? A flat roof is a bit like, oh, unless you're going to put a sun lounger on it. Do something or, better. Always a sign of a possibly dangerous or very fun pub. Yes, that is, yes, there's one near us called the Gladstone, and I always think that. I think, oh, I don't know about you. And they painted it yellow. Anyway, regardless, what, what what's going on with the castle? What have we got left there? So uh, a couple of different parts to the castle. So originally it was a peel tower. Remember I was saying that they lived in one part and then extended. So peel tower um, being a, a kind of key feature in uh, northern history. Right, okay. Talk with a peel tower. Yeah, so basically kind of a square okay. and it goes up. But there are many of them along kind of uh, Northumberland and across the Scottish border to watch out for those for those Scots. That's what I, they were there for. Hey, I like you, Melanie, because you really know how to explain things to me. Like a square that goes up, and I'm like, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many of these videos where I'm talking to someone and I'm I, I watch them back and I'm like, I can see myself nodding and not understanding <laughs> at all. <laughs> So you okay, look at the so... Alcatrave, wait, wait a second, sure. square that goes up please, thank you, <laughs> lovely, yes. lovely. Okay, so it was it was a, a defensive tower yeah. to keep yeah. those dastardly Scots well, to, out to of watch England. out for them. Uh, I don't don't know, uh, the, the family never went into battle as such in that way, the, the, there is some key family members who would have been involved, but there is no key battles around there okay. or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so so there's the Peel Tower part, but then like I said, they built an extension, and so you can go into the Peel Tower bit and on a, a normal non-COVID world go up the stairs and kind of explore some of the different rooms. Um, but then the extension is more of a ruin, so that is just uh, kind of no roof, so you don't have to worry about it being flat or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's it just gives you different parts and different designs. It's all about architecture, really, when you think. Mm. Hi everyone, it's us. We slightly forgot we had to film one of these and we're both in our pyjamas. Um, so I've got toothpaste about... on mine. <laughs> that is, I've got a gingerbread man. Um, we've got some patrons to thank. Also, we're in our pyjamas in separate houses. This isn't a big <laughs> reveal. <laughs> no, we live together. <laughs> Did we not tell you this? We live like Charlie Bucket's grandparents in a big house. We top and tail. Um, so nothing like... can lock in. <laughs> Bert and Ernie. Um, uh, I was imagining Tom and Becca being there as well, like the four I of us just live in a sort of like... <laughs> Thank you so much for watching our video before it devolves into the <laughs> National Treasures after dark. Um, <laughs> Sexy times with the National Treasures. We would like, Tom we would like to thank some people who we joined would, our we Patreon. Would. We would like to thank James. Thank you so much for becoming a patron, James. We adore you. Nice one. Also, Martin, you are a super great guy the super greatest do you know what laura jane you're the best too you are the full full best best and daniel don't forget yourself you daniel. are also great daniel nice one you king thank you so much um if you would like to become a patron please do you've got so many podcasts the we years and years you've got that many episodes that you could just go and devour um you get extra stuff you can have these videos as an audio in case you want to listen to them whilst you're out and about you can go to patreon.com forward slash national treasures bye here's my question it's a beautiful day and it's sunset okay. and I'm in love and me and my love have gone to Belsay Hall and I'm going to propose, right? Yeah. And um, a passerby is going to take a picture from a distance and be like, oh, I just captured this beautiful moment. Where should I propose to have the best backdrop photo for my romantic moment? Ooh. Well, it all depends whether you're a, an outdoor or an indoor girl, Ooh, I suppose. Okay, we'll go for an outdoor proposal and an indoor. And an indoor. So I would say um, outdoor would be in the quarry gardens, mm -hmm. uh, near where some of these, um, so where the, the quarry walls are, um, you also design these big arches that go over the top, and it makes you feel 
very Lord of the Ringsy. It's like you've gone to Rivendell. So I would say something with that as your backdrop of one of these giant arches and these unusual big plants and lots of flowers everywhere. And so you I would can't say that would be outdoor. You can't see the flat roof from there. <laughs> can't see the flat roof. Great. No, Great. No. And then um, from an indoor perspective, I would say inside the hall. Um, so we talked about this um, Greek style, but when you go into the hall in these empty rooms, as you do, you build a kind of Roman like uh, pillar hall inside your own house. So I would say in terms of a proposal, uh, inside with the natural light coming down from the top, from the, the big lantern, the, the glass lantern lights, uh, not lights, but natural light, should I say. Um, and then these giant pillars surrounding you, that would be your oh, indoor. Excellent. Great. Okay. Melanie. Can you, I was on your website earlier, uh, and obviously lovely website, can you tell me a little bit more about Belsay Awakes, because it looks super. So Belsay Awakes is a project that we're just getting underway, and COVID's kind of scuppered some of the plans, but basically it's going to transform Belsay for visitors. It's okay. a £6 million project that basically is partly funded by um, the Heritage Lottery Fund and the, the Heritage... Heritage not, National, can't speak. The National Lottery Heritage <laughs> Fund. That's um, how grateful you are. You're, just, <laughs> you're speechless. <laughs> speechless. Um, and basically it will re-roof the hall. Uh, the hall has a, a huge water ingress project because... Um, you're going to put a domed one on there, yeah? Yeah. Uh, not a domed one. So when Charles Monk designed it, he wanted a, a fairly flat roof um so that you couldn't really see it it's got a low pitch and he put all the drains for going from the outside inside oh needless to say that causes a few problems a few hundred years down the line thanks charles you dweeb <laughs> <laughs> um the formal gardens are getting redesigned um mm. then up at the castle we're putting interpretation in getting a new tea room toilets uh play area um and all this access work, improvement work that we're doing as well. Oh, amazing. And when's that due to sort of, you're in the middle of it? COVID the garden, yeah, the garden part has already started. The rest of the work kind of got um, halted with um, COVID, but uh, work should start later this year um, yeah. and take just over a year to finish. Amazing. So you, if you're there Super. this year, you'll start to see it. And then by next yeah. year, you can pop back and see what's changed. So really, yeah. people should go now, see it now, and then go and again then back. next year and go. Wah! And yeah. ideally, a year ago as well. That way. You see, <laughs> and, and if you can sort that out, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, yeah, super. No Thank, Thank you, you, Melanie. Okay. So just a little refresher. Mm -hmm. Which of the Middleton family was responsible for the design yes. ding, ding. building Charles, of the hall. Charles Monk, Charles Monk slash Middleton. And his friend, John Dobson. Ooh, you get a bonus point, Will. But Laura, the point goes to you. Extra bonus okay. point for Will. One one, one all. One okay, yeah. all right. So next question. So I referred to Charles going on his grand tour. It was actually his honeymoon. How long do you think he went on his honeymoon for? Um, did his wife go as well? <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> Six months. Two years. <gasps> Will, you get the point. Ah, dang it. Wow, that is a honeymoon and a half. Yes, but it two is. Two years. Where does his family's money come from? <laughs> He was just a businessman that, and, and that he finger in several pies, but no real kind of, you but know, I, he wasn't like a miner or. But I know businessmen and they're, and they're quite well off, some of my friends. And they go to the Seychelles for like a fortnight when they get married. <laughs> two years, is too, it's too long. <laughs> okay, next question. So I haven't mentioned this yet. So this will be up to you as to what research you did on the website. Uh, what mythical character is used in the Middleton family crest? Uh, a griffin. Incorrect. Wow. Well, a well, sphinx. Well. You've had your go. Shut up. <laughs> uh, a manticore. Incorrect. A unicorn. A dragon. Oh a Medusa. A Care Bear. A smurf? Uh, a moomin. A, um, a cyclops. A fairy? No. 
But you uh, you get it. You're heading in the right direction okay, with a fairy. Okay. Elf, um, goblin. Um, a to do with a to do with outdoors. Uh, a sprite. I think I'm gonna have to tell you. A nymph. A <laughs> a a mermaid. Uh, is it not to do with water? Is it the green man? <gasps> You're very very close. I'll give you half a point, Will. Uh, he doesn't need half a point. <laughs> So it's actually the wild man. So he's very similar to a, a, a green man, um, but he 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 was and, and is used on kind of the family crest, on cutlery, on crockery, and he is a key character that we're using um, to engage visitors with the history of the site, especially our younger audience. So in the project that we're about to undertake, the Belsey Wakes project, um, we're going to use the wild man to build a new play area. And a wild man themed play area. Just a little one in the woods. Do you have any more questions? Um yes, I have one question. Okay, and this and one's worth two points. It is worth two points. And it's a, a bit of a guess, but it's something every day is a learning day. And my learning day was last week or the week before, where we had a specialist come in to look at how to conserve historic fire extinguishers. <laughs> sure. What a day. What oh, a I day. bet that was yeah. coming up in your calendar and you were like, for goodness sake, I've got stuff to do. <laughs> Isn't a historic <laughs> fire extinguisher just a bucket with water in it? <laughs> well, that's what you might think. What do you think you do to conserve historic fire extinguishers? I mean, we're not going to get this, are we? <laughs> I want to, though. Loads. It's, it, it has been a lot of fun. Just but, blow on it, blow on it. But really, the question is, how do you, someone who's not trained in antique <laughs> fire extinguishers, think you maintain one? And we can circle the drain for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> But at the end of the day, we haven't got a clue, mate. <laughs> blow, blow on it and put vinegar on it. See, put vinegar on it. That's it. Put, just put vinegar on it. Chuck well, in some acid. <laughs> Well, it's funny you should mention, and but Will, I'm going to give you half a point. What? Well, not, be <laughs> not because you put acid in, because you take the acid out. So what? that chemical reaction is because inside it, there is a vial of sulfuric acid. Ooh. And when you crack or break the knob, as it says, the chemical reaction is the sulfuric acid reacting with the water and squirting out. So you have to separate it all out. And you were right, kind of dry it, blow on it, I guess, to make sure it's dry and... and... Three points for me. <laughs> Laura, I've won this week. I've not won one for so long. She haven't. It's, it's five to four and a half. So, uh, I, I want to come and visit immediately. Um, what's the accessibility like? If you've got any sort of mobility or sight issues, um, is it sort of an okay day out still? Yeah, so um, it's something that we're working on to improve, uh, but we do have visitors who um, are wheelchair users. Mm -hmm. um, we have just literally uh, in the process of finishing our new changing places toilet facilities. So that's a big tick in the heritage world. Um, and we'll probably be the first in the Northeast, we think as a heritage site to have changing places facilities, which is really cool. Yes. And then um, the paths are um, surface, but kind of rough in places. Um, and we do want to improve the camber and slope on some of them. But we do have uh, wheelchair users who go all the way around the site um, and, and can cope with it. But Fantastic. with the Belsey Wakes project that I was mentioning, that's something that we're going to be addressing, improving kind of surfacing and things like that. So if people are interested, as well they should be, mm -hmm. um, maybe they may not have seen Belsey Hall in the past, but what sort of things might people be aware of that are from the same area, be it TV shows or films or books? <laughs> all, all I could say is that in terms of a visit, it takes you on a, an imagination journey. Um, so when, especially when you go uh, back in time, going from the hall up to the castle, you go and you're going back in time and you're going underground and it just evokes loads of kind of, films and books such as Jurassic Park, Lord of the Rings, like I was saying, um, because you, you're in it, you become part of it. Um, yeah. 
It'd be a great place to do like a creative writing course, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. You've got so many different scenes to to go and, you know, like day one, you're in the hall, write a short story. Day two, you're in the castle, write a short story. Day three, you're in the quarry garden, do a different one. Um, that would be great. You can come and do my job. Yes, please. <laughs> it's a hell of a commute, Laura. Oh. <laughs> so all I, all I want is to wander around places and be like, well, listen, I will run a creative writing course. I am uh, long listed for Football Book of the Year. So <laughs> pretty cool. I thought you were going to flash a copy of your book there. Uh, my smart book. I don't think anybody wants to write. I've got. I've got, a copy, I've got a copy of it there. I've got one of the rare unsigned copies. Ooh, <laughs> there's not many of those. Um, Melanie, thank you so much. If people have fallen in love with Felse Hall and yourself, um, where should they go on social media to to see what you're up to and find out more and and keep abreast of when to visit and what's going on with your projects. So we have our own Facebook page, um, which links with English Heritage stuff as well. And the website, English Heritage website, you can just type in sites to search for would be Belsey Hall and it'll come up and you'll Wonderful. find what we're doing. Great. Are you on Instagram? Uh, only nationally. Uh, okay. Not individual sites can have an Instagram account. Melanie, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, Belsey may awake, but you are going to sleep. <laughs> Bye. That was good, right? It was, but you just look so pleased with yourself when you do stuff like that. Honestly, the longer you have your hamster, the more you're starting to look like her. Just your little face like... Ooh, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> I just... The thing is, I, I, I really like um, people to like what I do. Uh, yes. But if that person is me, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes what you do more than you do. That, that, that um, is true. Thank you so much for watching, viewers. We hope you've enjoyed this chat. We did a lot. Um, we are imminently with series two of the main podcast, so do look out for that. That's coming v soons. Um, and if you're not a patron yet and you're interested in Years and Years, the podcast where we take a single year in history and discuss it in depth every episode, then don't forget to go to patreon.com forward slash national treasures and follow us there. Uh, yes, also, if you want to talk to us on uh, the internet, uh, you can follow us at Treasures Pod on Twitter and Instagram, and you can email us. No one emails us anymore, and it makes me quite sad. Just email us and say, hey guys, you nice faces, uh, and that's National Treasures Podcast at gmail.com. Do you know what, Will? I met one of our patrons in real life last night. What were they like? Real nice. Where were they? Uh, at my gig in Clapham. You were in Clapham last night? I was, yeah. Wigging together tomorrow, but let's talk about that another time. Bye! Bye!